Hey there gang, welcome back to The Big Board. I thought I might uh, take a few moments to have a quick chat with you about Betaform. Uh, it's a uh, the original version from GDW. It came out as a Series 120 game, which was an attempt by GDW to produce titles that would be playable in 120 minutes or less, which is, you know, kind of a cool idea, especially uh, considering that was 1979. Uh, which is uh, certainly way back in the day and counts as a moldy oldie. So um, this game was designed by Frank Chadwick and many of you know I'm a reasonable fanboy of his. And I would say uh, at the outset that this is probably another example of uh, relatively fine rule writing, not as crisp and as tight as perhaps some of the other games of his that I've played, but uh, actually the pages aren't even numbered here, so I can't tell you how many pages there are. One, two, three, three four, five, six. Six pages of rules and one page of uh, charts. So, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty succinct. Succinct and perhaps a little sparse because uh, there are certainly some things in here that you go, hmm, I wonder how that might actually work. And it's not so you push the counters around, you find out. So uh, if you don't know the battle for uh, battle of or battle uh, of better, better form, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, set in February uh, 41, it's kind of the, uh, the follow on uh, pursuit and uh, blockade, if you want to use that word or... Uh, ambuscade of the uh, 10th Italian army retreating from the British um, <clears throat> after their uh, you know after their uh, battles at City, Bia, uh, City Barani and other places like you know Tobruk etc so those guys uh, hauled ass and uh, the British decided they could uh, do an end around and cut off the retreat and so uh, that all happened in and around the area of Better Farm which on the map is right here. Oops, can't see it. There you go, right here. Um, full map, excluding the uh, bright light there. So the uh, most of the Italian units come on the board here. This is the main road they come on. These are trails, so everything pretty much has to come on here. And then, let me just scoot that away. Sorry about the color. Uh, there we go. And uh, so, you know, the forces come down here and they tend to get uh, bottled up pretty, pretty quickly. And I'll explain why uh, the Commonwealth or not Commonwealth, but the British forces come on, on, on in through this angle. So you've got uh, Combs uh, task force, if you want to call it that, or group. It's a handful of armored cars and a couple of companies of infantry and one artillery company. And they kind of... Uh, intersect, you, you uh, meet each other around about here, have a little battle uh, that frees the Italian forces from their forced convoy exercise that they go through. And convoys are uh, run via these little truck or transports, they're called. They're, everything's got a very specific name. Uh, there are these little transport battalions and there's a couple of unclear rules to me about these guys but basically two of these transport battalions will move one unit and one unit is typically a battalion of Italians so uh, I think they were here so this movement exercise goes along and one of the one of the things that causes the Italians pain because the Italians have to try and get off the board to win. The British have to stop them from doing that. And one of the things that they, they end up having to do is also keep track of stacking. And so the stacking exercise is a means for you to uh, be very orderly in your gameplay, number one, because you cannot ever uh, uh, break the stacking limitations at all. Also, uh, weapons units, artillery, AA guns and anti-tank guns cannot move off the road or the track. So <clears throat> this poses problems, uh, nor can the transport units move off these uh, areas. So nearly everything comes in on this road and uh, it may well have been better to be running down this road, although the movement rates are doubled on this compared to this. So 
you sacrifice uh, a little bit of flexibility for the higher speed. And what I've found is through other machinations in the rules, such as infantry units uh, or personnel units, as they're called, they're not allowed to enter armored zones of control. Well, all these guys are armored zones of control. So I can spread these fellas out. And once I realized that, that kind of stopped this end around business that was going on here. Because uh, an infantry unit can simply, if it's next to another non-armored unit, it can go from here, it could be here, and they can move to here, and then move to here next turn, and then move out. Uh, although it actually doesn't say whether or not it could only move one hex. It just says you can move from a zone of control to another zone of control. So I'm assuming that means you can use all of your movement points to do that. So you've got to have these armored units along. Now they can't enter, uh, infantry can't enter a zone of control of an armored unit, but if they're stacked with an armored unit, then they can. So you can see already, uh, you're, you're going to have to play this little puzzle game here to ascertain what the right mix of units are, how far do you push down, and when do you push down, do you wait until you have a, a weight of force, and then try and push your way through and fight the uh, far more effective uh, British units. They have high morale, generally speaking, and they have a, uh, a much better combat values when you consider you know, this is a two versus, uh, well, the tanks are about, the armor cars are about the same, but uh, here's a two here as well. But generally speaking, uh, where the infantry, for instance, this infantry unit here, it's a zero two ten with 10 movement points, uh, which is interesting that the infantry are moving faster than the tanks, right, and than scout cars. Uh, infantry are uh, zero anti-tank to combat. You can't see that, so that's pretty pointless, me telling you that. Um, as a company of guys, zero, uh, zero anti-tank value, two for the combat value, and 10 for the movement rate, versus um, these scout cars are 10, uh, but these tanks are eight. Um, I imagine they're Matildas or something like that. I'd have to look up in the back here. It actually gives you a rundown. Uh, just no, it doesn't give the details. It just says light tanks, so cruisers and lights, uh, generally speaking, doesn't say what they were specifically. No, it does not. M13s and 40s, and I don't know what the designation is of that. So here we go. Uh, <coughs> so this, so the the thing that while I, I enjoy the game, uh, the thing that I'm finding a little disappointing I guess is it is really kind of a puzzle game and the British have got their string of defenses here we've got third hussar in the back waiting for these Italian units to come on down and decide where they want to try and break through I've got a, a, a fuzzy screen but here we go I've got um, artillery in the background here that will provide defensive provide defensive fire support uh, they, the British can combine their artillery because two companies can fit in a hex, whereas all their, all the Italian uh, artillery is a battalion and only one battalion can be in a hex plus one smaller unit. So they get the benefit of combining their firepower. They have stronger units, basically. If you look at this, uh, this battalion has, uh, almost the same, a sl just a slightly higher combat value. You know, I guess, you know, 30% higher than these guys here uh, for one company. So it's a company versus uh, a battalion, yet uh, these guys are uh, nowhere near as tough. Obviously, these guys are in flight, so they probably have limited ammo. Uh, most of their forces are run down and all that sort of stuff. I understand what we're trying to emulate here, but it, uh, it is awkward for the Italians, and they're the ones solving the problem. They're the ones cracking the puzzle. Do they go around? Can they uh, punch their way through? What's gonna be the best way for them to try and drive their way off the map, capture the victory points and all that sort of stuff. Now you may be wondering about the, uh, the track on the side over here. 
simple morale track. Uh, each formation name has a, a morale rating. And every time you get a combat result, it's either an outright elimination or it's a morale check with 2d6 against this number uh, with a plus or whatever the case may be, depending on how egregious the uh, end result is uh, of the combat. So the Italians have not done so well, They've lost quite a few units. And every time you lose a unit, it drops down the morale. And of course, that makes it harder to roll under the morale number. Rolling under a five on 2d6 is uh, statistically challenging, as is rolling under a two, uh, very challenging. So there are some units here that are kind of screwed. Uh, funnily enough, the turn track is here. This is the hourly turn track, but there's no game turn track. Uh, now there's only two game turns, so we don't really need it, but it would have been nice to have just two boxes here and a counter for this track and a counter for this track. But you know, let's not be fussy, it was 1979. Uh, they gave you a blank counter. Work it out. So uh, anyway, there you have it. It's uh, kind of cute, uh, fun, pretty fast playing, I would say. You, Although I think the British player will get a little frustrated, a little bored, because the Italian's going to have to sit here and go, okay, if I move this guy down here then no one can get by. So, uh, because these guys, uh, these guys can't go, they, they can't go off the road, but let's say, uh, these guys here can't go off the road. So they're blocking the road now. Uh, they can't go by these guys and they can't go back. So where, where, where are we gonna go? What are we gonna do? These guys gotta move first. So let me move, move, move those guys out of the way somewhere useful, then move these fellas. So you are playing that argy-bargy kind of uh, higgly-piggly work it all out type of thing. I have this uh, thought about puzzle games that I'm not going to share right now, but I don't like them. And, uh, and it, it, pardon the air conditioner, and it makes for a cute exercise or an interesting exercise or a fabulous exercise once. And once you've worked it out, you know, you've cracked the code on the game, particularly a game like this, well, you know, you're, you're kind of done with it, so I guess that's okay. You pack it up and you keep it and put it on the shelf and touch it every now and then and fondle the parts, but you're not pulling it out and exploring necessarily the, the historical situation. You're coming in going, oh, okay, as a British player, I've got to string a line of uh, units across here with zones of control interlocking. Nobody can get by unless they've got armor put some back up in, boom, away we go. Italians, good luck, work it out. So I, I think there's a, uh, I think there's probably a little blog article I need to write uh, about puzzle games and, and some of my favorites and some of the others that are not as favorite of mine. And I'll add this into the puzzle game stack, I believe. I call this a puzzle game, I dub thee. All right, gonna let you go. Better form, GDW, 1979. Cute, fun, interesting. There was a reprint uh, done by Consum Press. Check it out. I haven't played it. I'm going to assume that it's uh, in essence the same. I know it's a much larger map. Maybe the hexes are bigger or something. But uh, I'm sure it's uh, uh, just as fun. And maybe it has some optional rules and some, uh, some additional rules to give it a little more richness and maybe a little more historical narrative as well. Adiós.